Sleep expert Dr. Michael Brass on how to get a good night's sleep. He knows sleep so well that he's called the sleep doctor and has appeared as an expert on shows including Oprah and Dr. Oz and websites like the Huffington Post. But he's also happy to admit when he's flying blind. Here's the truth of the matter, he says. We don't 100 know, why sleep is so important. We know what happens when the body doesn't get sleep. But we don't know why literally everything you do you do better with a good night's sleep. This includes your immune system, your concentration, your decision making and your reaction time. Sleep is not an on, off switch, Dr. Braz says. You don't just go in and immediately get a good night's sleep. It's more like slowly pulling your foot off the gas and slowly putting your foot on the brake, there's a process that has to occur. And here are some of his tips to help you get a good night's sleep. The worst thing to do before bed. Contrary to popular opinion, it's not getting on your smartphone. Here's the deal, there's definitely data to show that blue light, which is emitted by telephones and iPads and whatnot, definitely has an effect there's no doubt about it, Dr. Braz says. But he says that watching a TV show that relaxes you into sleep is a lesser evil than banning your mobile phone and stressing about it. It's the path of least resistance. It's not necessarily the light coming from the device but the content, Dr. Braz says. Watching television across the room, and your eyes are closed and you're kind of just listening to it, that's a very different situation to trying to get your high score on Candy Crush, reading Facebook or emails. It's about the emotional content of what you're doing right before sleep. Instead, Dr. Brass counsels against having big emotional discussions with your partner or someone else right before bed. It sets off this whole level of autonomic arousal, you're angry, you're upset, and you can't stop thinking right before bed, he says. Weird, but IT works. Dr. Brass's strangest sleep hack for when you're exhausted by need to get shit done is called a nap latte. You take a cup of black coffee, cooled down with three ice cubes. Drink it quickly and then take a 25 minute nap immediately after drinking the coffee.
25 minutes, works, because I don't want, my clients, to go into a deep sleep, he says. The caffeine then blocks the sleep inducing factors and this little 25 minutes will give you 4 hours, of productivity, guaranteed. Another recipe that Dr. Braz swears by is banana tea. Basically, it's a chunk of organic banana, peel on, cut in half and with the stem and the tip removed, steeped in boiling water for 4 minutes. Drink the water, Dr. Braz says. It's loaded with magnesium which is very calming and is a great replacement for chamomile tea. You gotta like bananas though. Finally, Dr. Brass's favorite little trick that might sound crazy is that he gets his clients to count backwards from 300 in increments of threes. It's so complicated you can't think of anything else and it's so doggone boring that you're out like a light, he laughs. Hacks that don't work. Something that you should ignore when it comes to sleep hacks or anything involving the sleep inducing amino acid tryptophan. That includes the old wives tale that you should eat a turkey sandwich before bed to help you get to sleep. You'd need to eat a 20 kg turkey in order to feel any difference, Dr. Brass laughs. The same is true of a glass of warmed milk, also because of the trace amounts of tryptophan. You'd need almost 6 liters of warm milk, which sounds disgusting, Dr. Brass says, in order to induce sleep. But the reason that warm milk might work is because your mum or grandma might have given you warm milk as a child, and it's that memory or experience that helps relax you. How to beat jet lag. There are a lot of different factors to consider, Dr. Braz says. How many time zones are you traveling? And what direction are you traveling in? It turns out east is least and west is best when it comes to jet lag. When I'm traveling westerly I'm only asking my body to stay up later. But asking my body to go to bed 3 or 4 hours earlier is a challenge. Dr. Bryce is in Sydney as the sleep expert for Princess Cruises, for whom he has designed a world first customizable bed to ensure its guests have the best possible night's sleep. He traveled from Los Angeles to Sydney and, courtesy of a few hacks, managed to be jet lag in its tracks. The first trick is melatonin, the hormonal supplement that regulates sleep. He took about a half a milligram on the flight to ensure he had a good night's sleep. He also advises travelers sleep as close to but not in the exit row, as this places you near the fuselage and reduces turbulence. In flight, use a rolled up jumper or throw a blanket as a pillow, and swivel your neck pillow around, so the cushiony bulk supports the front of your neck. That's because your head tends to bob which will wake you up, 
and by rotating the pillow it stops your head from bobbing, he told news. Com. Once you land, it's a matter of a little bit of caffeine and direct sunlight. Schedule your naps, take melatonin, get some sunlight and a cup of coffee and, you can, reduce your jet lag to a day. Why do you sleep better on holiday? The biggest factor that impacts sleep is stress, Dr. Braz says. Which explains why, when the stresses of life are removed from the equation when you are on holiday you often get the best night's sleep of your life. It's a combination of giving your brain time to switch off and your choice of holiday destination. Some people take an adventure holiday when they're on the move, and those aren't very sleep-inducing vacations, Dr. Braz says. But a relaxing retreat, like an island destination visited on one of Princess Cruz's trips, can lead to a good night's sleep that give you energy to enjoy your holiday the next morning. <laughs>